The second generation Nissan Leaf aims to electrify the affordable part of the EV market in more ways than one. It goes further, not only in terms of powered up range, but also in its efforts to bring new levels of space, comfort and technology to the full electric part of the family hatchback segment. In short, it's a sophisticated statement of just how far battery powered cars have come. Whatever your opinion on EV motoring, this Leaf is guaranteed to surprise you. Can an electric car really be enjoyable to drive? Nissan says this one is. A light tap on the throttle delivers the kind of seamless pull-away demeanor you'd expect from this kind of car. But a sharp stab with the right foot fires the leaf forward like a scalded cat. The 150 PS power output you get from this Mark II model represents a 40% increase in motor power that comes with a 25% increase in torque and an increase in battery capacity from 24 to 40 kilowatt hours for standard models means that the operating range is increased to an official and actually reasonably realistic worldwide harmonized light vehicle testing procedure figure of 168 miles, considerably more than direct competitors can offer. But to get even an early three-figure driving range, you're going to need to make copious use of the various driving aids that Nissan provides. An eco mode restricts throttle travel, and there are two ways of harvesting regenerative energy that will slow down the battery's rate of power drain. As with the previous leaf, the most obvious way of doing this is by selecting the provided B ratio on the gearbox, which gleans regenerative energy from the powertrain. With this Mark II model, there's the extra option of using the standard E-pedal system, which in addition also gains regenerative energy from the friction brakes. With E-pedal activated, you'll hardly ever need to press the brake pedal. The car slows itself, which sounds strange, but is something you adjust to pretty quickly. Greater chassis torsional stiffness means that handling is considerably better than the original version of this model could offer, and further aided by reworked steering and Nissan's intelligent trace control and intelligent ride control systems. Plusher models get the brand's suite of Pro Pilot semi autonomous driving aids and the Pro Pilot Park system, which can slot you into a space at the press of a button. You'll want to know about charging. A 7 kilowatt hour 32 amp wall box for your garage comes at no extra cost, which is just as well because charging from a domestic plug would take a yawning 21 hours. Using the wall box, that figure reduces to just 7.5 hours. If you find a rapid charging point, there at Nissan dealers and in motorway service areas, uh, you'll be able to replenish your battery to within 80% of its charge in around 40 minutes. Nissan reckons that the daily charging process will add no more than about £25 to your monthly electricity bill, which doesn't seem much when you take into account the huge savings you'll be making on fuel, and the fact that full electric cars attract a benefit-in-kind tax liability of only 9%. Here, if you ever doubted it, is proof that electric vehicles are now firmly targeted at mainstream buyers. Overall, this is a larger, lower and more sharply sculpted design that will broaden this model's customer base considerably. Buyers moving into electric vehicle ownership for the first time will also find the transition easier once they get behind the wheel. There's a high set SUV-like driving position, but otherwise the feel seems at first glance very much as you get in any ordinary family hatch. Closer inspection, though, reveals some unique leaf cabin features. A stubby little auto gear lever and an instrument binnacle display that curiously mixes an analogue speedo with an accompanying customisable colour TFT display. And pretty much everything else you'll need to know is delivered by the Centre Dash 7-inch Nissan Connect EV7 monitor that nearly all variants get. It's not as sophisticated as the screens you get in rival EV models, but with smartphone mirroring and navigation, including a map showing local charge stations, it delivers most of what you'll need to know. Let's take a seat in the rear. Bottom line, 
No other EV on the market can offer you more rear seat space. The bench back here can comfortably accommodate a couple of adults and three kids will probably be fine too. Taking three large folk though is made difficult by the prominent height of this centre transmission tunnel. Lift the tailgate and you find yourself faced with a 436 litre cargo bay, around 100 litres more than the previous generation model could offer. Nissan's EV remit has been broadened quite a bit with the second generation version of this design. Only longer journeys now require nervous range calculation. The looks won't leave the neighbours assuming you've joined the green party. Charging's now more straightforward and the interior no longer makes you feel like you're in some kind of concept car. You'll quickly adapt to the smooth driving demeanour made possible by the clever e-pedal. And the extra connectivity, the semi-autonomous driving aids and the stronger standards of safety are all welcome. Which leaves us with what? Another defining moment in electric vehicle history? It certainly feels like it.